So hello everyone, welcome to our new video and today we are going to learn about something called this tournament method. So this tournament method it is very, it, I will not say that it is very unique but it is very uncommon. Many people don't know about this tournament method. So what is this tournament method and why are we using this? So at first look at the problem statement that we have here. We have a problem statement as we have to find the maximum and minimum of an array using minimum number of comparisons. Just have a look here. It has a condition that we have to find it in minimum number of comparisons. So we have many different ways here. The first one we have the sorting algorithm, then we have the regular linear search and then we have the tournament method and the last one which is done by actually comparing everything in pairs. Now this Comparing everything in pairs, it is little similar to the tournament method. And this tournament method, it is actually the most efficient way of finding the maximum and minimum of an array. So what is this tournament method and why it is said so? So what it actually does, so this tournament method, it is going to divide the array into parts and compare the maximum and minimum of the two parts to get the maximum and minimum of the whole array. So let's say if we just step aside a little bit to talk about the different tournaments that we have in our world. The cricket tournament, football, hockey, uh, basketball. There are many different, uh, many different games which have many different type of tournaments. Similarly, we have tournaments in our colleges for different departments for who wins the cricket match or who wins the football match, right? So what actually happens? We have let's say eight, uh, eight different departments in our college. So it is a group of eight teams. So that group of eight teams, it is further divided into four and four. So whoever wins the subgroup match is going to play the final. Similarly, those, those two groups of four and four, they are also divided into groups of two and two to find who is going to win the match. So all those four teams will be playing the semi-final. So it is also something similar here. So here, let's say I have taken an array here of eight elements, seven, five, six, nine, two, one, and zero, three. So what actually happens here, the entire array, it is first divided into two sub arrays of four and four. Then they are further divided as two, two elements every time. And those two, two elements are again divided into single elements. Okay. Now this has to be done recursively. The main array, it will be dividing the entire array into parts every time. Now, whatever we get here. Now, here we have eight different sub arrays with single elements. Now, if we have single element into the array, then how we are going to find the maximum and minimum? It is clear that if we have single element, that element will be the minimum as well as the maximum, right? So now let's not talk about both maximum and minimum. We will simply talk about the maximum element. So here, all these sub arrays will be returning each and every single number 7, 5, 6, 9, 2, 1 and 0, 3. Then again, whatever it returns, first here 7 and 5 will be compared. So here, this returns a value 7 here. 6 and 9 will be compared. This is going to return a 9 from here. 2 and 1, here 2 will be returned and here 3 will be returned. Now whatever this they returns, so again 7 and 9 will be compared, which is the maximum one. So here, this sub array, this sub array, of size 4, it is going to return the value 9 out of 7 and 9. Then here it is going to compare 2 and 3 and it is and this sub array is going to return 3 here. Again 9 and 3 will be compared and this main sub array will be returning 9 as the maximum value to the main function from where this function was actually called. So this is what we call it as tournament method. We just have a tournament between two sub arrays and we check which sub array is giving us the maximum value similar to like which football team is scoring more goals or which cricket team is scoring more uh, more number of runs so now let's have a look at the program so now if you look at the program here now here the first thing here we need to make a function which is going to return both minimum and maximum but we know a uh, function in C, it can return only one value at a time. So here, what are we going to do? We are actually going to 
make a structure here with the values the two integer values min and max it will be actually storing the numbers min min the minimum number and the maximum number both so here we have a function here as get min max this get min max will take the entire array then it will take the minimum index and the higher index of each and every array whenever this function is getting called then this min max function what it is going to do it will actually return the entire pair of min max so that is what we have the return type here as struct pair the it will be returning a pair of those two values it will be actually returning a variable of the structure pair type so here we have the main function inside the main function we have this entire array here then we have a array size as 8 so here we are calling the function here again get min max by passing the entire array the first index and the last index here is array size minus 1 now whatever it returns it is going to return a pair of variable a pair means the structure pair that we have here so for that we need a similar type of variable to store the value so here we have a min max value of the structure pair type now whatever it returns min max dot mean will have the minimum value min max dot max will have the maximum value so let's say when this function is called so here again we have three different variables min max min max left which will be storing the the variable of the min max of the left array and here this one will, will be storing the min max value of the right array so here we will have a look at this gradually how are they working now here one very important thing we need we will be needing a variable to find the mid index every time so here we have this first set of statements suppose we have only single element as I said the entire array will be divided up to single elements so if we have single element in the array so for that single element it is clear that the low and the high value will be same so that is the condition here if low is equal to high then both maximum and minimum will have the exact same value as for maximum and as for minimum so it is going to return the min max at that particular time again suppose if the array size is 2 here so whenever if the array size is 2 so it is clear that the high will be one more than the low value so here we have the condition as the same then again if we have two values it is clear one value will be the maximum and the other one will be the minimum so what is going to happen here every time it will be comparing that whatever the value it is if the low value is greater than the high value then the maximum will be the first value and the minimum will be the second value which is in the high index else maximum will be the second value and minimum will be the first value which is stored in the low index and whatever we get here min max will be returned here directly and the same thing has is been going on for single element it is also going to return the entire min max now suppose if we have more than two elements then how are we going to calculate it so the first thing is we have to find the mid value by finding the average low plus high divided by 2 now after mid is found we have to divide the entire array and we have to call the function again this is here we are using recursion here so here what is going on here suppose we are calling this function get min max we are passing the entire array for the left array we will we will be passing the low index as low itself and high will be changed to mid similarly for the right array low will be changed to mid plus one and high will remain the same now whatever they are going to return whatever the left array returns it will be stored in min max left and whatever the right array returns it will be stored in min max right now whatever they return min max left and right we have to compare the values from there itself let's say we have so let's first compare the minimum values here so for minimum min max left dot mean and min max right dot mean both values will be compared if 
min max if the left one is smaller then the actual min max mean will be taken from the left one if uh, else in the opposite case the min the minimum value will be taken from the right array similarly we have to do the same thing for comparing the maximum value suppose the maximum value is larger in the left sub array so the maximum will be equal to the the maximum from the left sub array else the maximum will be the maximum value will be here equal to the maximum of the right sub array and whatever we get here the entire min max will be returned from this point of time but this is how the tournament method works and if you just go to on comparing that which method has has less number of comparisons so tournament method actually has the least number of comparisons here so now let's just execute the code and see how it works so here we have so here in this array we can see that minus 10 is the minimum element and 5000 is the maximum element so let's execute the code here so here it is giving me the result as minus 10 and 500 if we add any more values of it or we change the values then also it is going to work as the same let's say if i add some more values as uh, 5555 five, five, five. uh, then 25000 and let's say one more we have 25 here so the size has now changed to 11 as we have added three more elements execute the code so here the minimum element still remains the same as minus 10 and the maximum element has changed to 5555 five, five, five. so this is how the tournament method works and this is the implementation of the tournament method so thank you very much and if you have any doubts you can definitely write us in the comment section we will definitely look at it and try to resolve your problems or doubts and please like our video because that gives us a motivation to record more videos every time and don't forget to subscribe to our channel and please press the bell icon so that you get a notification whenever we upload a new video so thank you very much i will see you guys in the next video and till the time keep learning